Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the conversation. I'm your host, Roxanne Grace. Guys, today we are having a conversation with none other than Annie Lobert, founder and president of Hookers for Jesus. You don't want to miss it. So sit back, relax, and get ready for this conversation. As always promised, I will bring my guest in in just a moment. But first, I want to remind you guys, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to our channel. Also, guys, check our other social profiles at the exact same handle at Dream Label Group. Check out our website, dreamlabelgroup.com. Uh, there you can join our mailing list and be some of the first to hear brand new music from Dream and receive updates about our awesome show. Also on our website, guys, you will find links to subscribe uh, to our podcast. You can find us pretty much everywhere at iHeartRadio, Apple, Google Podcasts, Pandora, and so many more. So go check it out, guys. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever felt shame? I mean, maybe you're feeling shame right now. Maybe you're dealing with the struggle of shame. Listen, today we are going to talk to Annie and hear her crazy, awesome, redemptive story. And we're going to discuss how to walk in freedom from shame. So you don't want to miss it. Let's bring in the one you've been waiting for right now. None other than the beautiful, amazing Annie Lobert. What's up, girl? Hey. Hey. How hey, are hey, you, my beautiful sister? The conversation. Hey. I'm here. Party, party. That's oh, by right. the way, happy belated birthday. I love it. I love your set. I love what you're doing. So um, amazing. Thank you, my beautiful sister. Thank you. I love what you're doing too. I want to, I want to talk about everything. I feel like there's so much we got to try to stick into this 30 minutes because literally you have so much to give. Uh, I want to talk about though, like, what did you, what did you do for your birthday? Did you have a good birthday? I did. Family was in town and we went and ate and I love sushi. So guess what? Guess what we had? Sushi. That's funny because the first time, time the yeah. first time I met you, you took me out to your fa favorite sushi joint. Do you remember that in Las Vegas? Oh my gosh, I did. Oh, you a did. Yeah, you still go there. <laughs> I can't. Well, you know what? I just love it because I love the Japanese culture. So, and it's mm. super healthy for you. And I know some people would say, "Well, I don't think so if you're pregnant." But did you know that the Japanese people? Fun fact: the women that are pregnant eat sushi because supposedly they have this this belief that it gives the baby more brain cells because of the really? made of trees. Yeah. And it creates that like DNA geome in their brain. So it's really cool just to think about the omega threes hitting your system. Oh, Fish nice. is really good for you if it's not polluted. So right. I love it. Right. Well, that is amazing. So I'm glad you had a good time for your birthday. I also want to ask you, how is Oz doing? Any updates on that? Oz is doing okay, and I know some people might not understand or know what's going on. My husband's having a lot mm -hmm. of health issues. We've been married 11 years. He's in a band named Striper. So if you guys want to Google that, if you don't know what Striper is, it's a band that crossed over in the 80s on MTV. It's a heavy metal Christian band. They wore makeup, long hair, and tights. Oh. And yeah, a lot of people came against them and said, that's not godly, but oh well. God used it anyway. And they threw Bibles out and they still do to this day. They're still together. So my husband two years ago was on stage playing in Las Vegas. In fact, at the Harris Casino. And he had a massive seizure, fell down for 30 minutes, was unconscious. The ambulance came. We went to the hospital. I, it was one in the morning. It was crazy. And the doctor said, you have two dark lesions in your brain. And we were like, great. What is that? So he has two brain tumors. He has a glio in the back of his head like it's about that big golf ball maybe a little larger and then wow. he has an acoustic neuroma which is a tumor that's inside the ear um right below the eyes like it's right on the bottom of the brain and they both have to be operated on unfortunately we've been trying to do natural medicine so we're working with ucla right now with their team that does research which by the way does immunotherapy research and we've heard such great things about that and there's a possibility when they do the, the biopsy for his glioma in the back of his head that he right. will be able to get his immune cells grown in a Petri dish and they can re-inject them back into his, his okay. brain and possibly shrink the tumor. Yeah. There's no guarantee that he's even going to match the DNA and the, the gene sequence 
but we're praying for that match. So if we could ask for any prayer for that, that would be yes. amazing. The other tumor just needs to come out. He's going to lose his hearing. Okay. It's it's kind of a harsh reality. And yeah, he's not, he's doing very well spiritually, emotionally. Mm -hmm. He's a little depressed sometimes. This is a hard thing, Roxanne. He's a musician. And mm -hmm. you know, his, his left side of his body where he plays his guitar, because he's a phenomenal guitar player. He is um, it, just incredible if you ever hear him and a singer and a songwriter. But when you lose the this tumor, if they scoop it all the way out in the back of his head, it has a direct effect on his left side of his body uh. and his face recognition skills in his brain. So there's a possibility he will lose his left side of his body uh. feeling and also to recognize even me. And that that's really scary. So we need prayer and we know that we, first of all, we trust God. Come on. We trust God. We know that with all mm -hmm. things, their miracles are possible with God, right? And so we, we are going to believe and, and just press in and know that no matter what happens, we're going to deal with it. And we're believing that God's going to give it a good outcome. Amen. And he is the healer. Jesus is the healer. The Holy Spirit heals. And so we are trusting that God's going to do that for him. And no matter what happens, the, either an operation, right. you know, whether it be mm -hmm. chemotherapy. And yes, right. the doctors just want to go in there, the other doctors he had, and grab that tumor and yank it out right away. And that is so dangerous. You just don't drill in someone's skull, take out half the bone and start digging around because we right. all know our brains control everything. Our heartbeat, our breathing. <laughs> Our blood sugar, there's a, there's a pituitary gland in there. It's like, hello. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so much. Your, your cortex thinks and you're, you, know, you, you, you get all our information from the front part of your brain and then your mm -hmm. emotions and amygdala is in the middle. The back part is all your functions, right? So right. it's just super, super crucial right now. So we are definitely standing with you guys and we'll be we'll continue you. to pray. And we ask, you know, all of our viewers as well, like, please keep Oz in your prayers. We just praise God for God that we serve uh, a miracle working God. And uh, he is so faithful and so glad that he's in your corner. Um, yeah. yeah please keep us updated on that. You know, I will. You, I will. It's family. hard, but I, I will do it. Yeah, it, it is hard. Like, thank you so much, Annie. Like, I know your schedule is so crazy, like for taking the time to come on the program today. Um, I want to kind of just jump right in. I know only have a half an hour together and I know you and I, we could, we could talk for hours. We just blew five <laughs> minutes, girl. But anyway, we I, five minutes <laughs> I know. And then before we came on, we were talking behind the scenes. I, I feel like we could literally talk all day and I love it. You're so much fun. Um, let's talk a little bit about your ministry. Let's talk about Hookers for Jesus, Destiny House. Uh, maybe share a little bit what's going on with Destiny House right now. I know maybe there were some changes because of the pandemic. Um, and let's talk too about uh, what was behind or the inspiration behind the name Hookers for Jesus. I know you and I already know. You already know the inspiration. All the, not all the viewers. But, but we know. have viewers that might not understand. No, they, they don't know. Get, <laughs> they might get a little snarky like, oh my gosh, like she is like calling herself Hookers for Jesus. It's like so blasphemous. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's still working. She's selling herself. Oh, oh my gosh. No, no, it's not what's going on. Right. It's, it's fish hook. And actually the name hooker and whore and slut and all that, I was called by the police and the traffickers. And so yeah. I am a survivor of sex trafficking. And just to be very clear, I came in the industry on free choice, free will. I was not forced in the very beginning. I met our traffickers at a nightclub when I was a teenager. Mm. I am 53 right now. I know y'all might not want to believe it, but yes, I'm 53. I've lived a lot of years and came into this lifestyle as a teen. My dad was an alcoholic. My daddy was very abusive towards my mother and us children. I grew up in a very a military style family. My dad was in the air force. We moved around. I went to seven different schools. So I always had this just very a sense of thinking that my dad didn't love me. So I searched for love in all the wrong places, met the wrong people, wrong time, got date rape more times than I can count, you know, and also, like I said, went to this nightclub that night. And I had at the time had three jobs and I honestly did not um, have any boundaries with my life. Like I literally, if a guy liked me, I would, went out on a date with him. 
Huh. If he was good looking, that was my killer right there. Like that was like, if a guy was fine, I was like, whoa, he's super fine. I'm totally giving, giving the time of the day and uh, flirt with him back. And then if it ends up, we end up in bed. Oh, well, mm -hmm. we end up in bed. Right. So that's what I, my mentality was just so wanting to be loved. And totally. I honestly don't think that it was promiscuity when I look back now, because I just, wanted someone to tell me I was beautiful and that I was totally. like chosen and like I was special and smart and all that. So these guys that night, they weren't even attracted to me, but my girlfriend starts dating mm -hmm. one of them. And then we went to Hawaii and I learned for the first night to work and sell my body, quit all three of my jobs. I'm from Minnesota. So that whole area that got destroyed by the riots is where I grew up. Oh, I rode my bike through Lake street. I lived three blocks from that target actually four from that target that got broken into the, the auto zone that got burned. That used to be Snyder's drugstore. I have a lot of memories in that neighborhood. And I'm really, really sad about what happened in Minnesota and just wow. the whole situation with our country right now. But regardless, I'm a Minnesota girl at heart. So, but yeah. just like I said, I chose that lifestyle in the very beginning yeah. and I found out how much money I could make. And, and I'm telling you in the eighties, 500, a $2,000, $5,000 a night, double it because that's what I was making. And, and then I left Minnesota because that's where I met my, my first trafficker. He came into the nightclub. I was a stripper. I loved to dance. Yeah. So I was really good at it. My body was on hit. And it was like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to pick all my clients. I'm going to pick all the men that purchased me. That way I won't get raped or killed. Cause I almost mm -hmm. got raped or killed on a couple calls in Minnesota. I went on some uh, out call service calls. If someone doesn't know what that means, it's like you place an ad in the yellow pages. Back then it was the newspaper and yellow pages. And so there was a social media, right? We didn't yeah, have there was no media, social right. media. So I ended up meeting this guy and he, you know, was a drug dealer and, and Roxanne, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. I was like, mm -hmm. you cannot deal drugs. What are you doing? Crack was at its epidemic back then. It was mm -hmm. the eighties. Crack was like King. So I took him to Vegas with me. My girlfriend that was in Hawaii had moved back to Vegas, which her trafficker had lived. So we stayed with them the first night that I worked. He said to me, break yourself. And I was like, oh, hold up. What did you just say to me? I'm not giving you a dime of what I just made. This is my money. I've earned this money and you are not going to get a dime from me. Wait a and second. So this is a guy that you're, you're in relationship with this guy. It was a boyfriend. It wasn't like just some guy was, yeah, that was out of nowhere. Boyfriend. Yes. He was my boyfriend and I loved him. I was in love with him. I trusted him. I believed in him. And I honestly thought I was going to take him out of drug dealing. Do you yeah. find that most girls, uh, when they end up in a situation of being pimped, it usually starts out of a relationship or is it generally like they, it's, it's just a random person saying like, I'm going to pimp you. Like, how does that normally begin? No, the, the, it normally, the best way that the traffickers can get to, usually it's someone, you know, it's a family member or it's a friend, a family friend member, or someone that you've known through another friend. And normally it, it will usually start with romantic relationship. Wow. Interesting. And so, or someone that you trust that you, like a friend will pull you into it, but more than, more than anything, it does start with romantic liaisons. Hmm. Rom and, and listen, they don't always just outright say, Hey, yo, I'm a trafficker. Oh, yo, I'm a pimp. This is pimp and B, you know, no, right. they, 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 they groom you. And they the grooming process exactly. is, is, is clothing, flowers, getting your hmm. nails done. We all like our nails on ladies, right? If if they find a girl like I was that mm -hmm. is wanting nice things, because back then I never had nice things. I didn't have designer gigs. I didn't have a nice car. Okay. I wanted to go to college. I, I wanted things in life. And the typical American dream is what they use to lure you with, right? right? Now, this guy didn't have to lure me. I was already in the sex industry. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of people say to me, you weren't trafficked. That's a lie. That's mm -hmm. a lie. Because just because you got into it on your own personal choice in the very beginning doesn't mean that you aren't trafficked. Later on, a couple months down the line, I got trafficked and stayed trafficked for 10 years or more. Wow. It, two different traffickers. Beat wow. down on a regular basis, just demeaned, shamed, just spit on, yelled at, hair cut off, kidnapped pistol whipped, guns in my mouth, guns to my head, guns to my ear, 
you know, and, and, and just honestly, just the worst experience. I, I mean, I've got a lot of trauma that I've healed from, from that. And a, there was a lot of shame with it because the voice in my head, and let's get to that shame thing piece, Roxanne, mm. the, the voice in my head said, this is your fault. You chose this, Annie. You chose this. A lot of people want to say, well, you know, yeah, you, you, you know, you, it's, it's not like taken. Of course, it's not like taken, not in all cases where you get forced. In. But once you're in it and you can't leave, the pimps, the traffickers use isolation, coercion, which is forced fraud and trickery to get you in, in that lifestyle, but also to keep you in that lifestyle. They use threats and they make you believe they're going to kill you, which mine would have. You see, he had a former charge with his first bottom girl, which I was a bottom girl. That's a girl in the stable that has been there the longest, right? Okay. That's in charge of a lot of things for him. And if she's not, he'll make sure that she gets whipped for it, that she's not taking charge. So she's basically coerced and controlled by him. And she's the manager. I mean, it's it sounds crazy. But for me, like I was in this place where if I left, I would have gotten hunted, stalked, which I did. And he kidnapped me back. He kidnapped me back when I left and forcibly locked me up in a trunk, tied me up. I'm telling you guys, this is not a, a made up thing. This is not fantasy or some long tail. I'm telling this is actually something that's happening right now as we speak. Mm. This is real. It's raw and it's in our own backyards in Minnesota. Oh yeah. Minnesota, Hawaii and Las Vegas trafficked. Okay. Yeah. So, when this happened to me, it, it, it was, it was a shock. I, I was, I was, I couldn't believe that somebody that said they loved me would hit me like that and choke me out. And actually my ex trafficker was an abused little boy. His dad never really saw him when he was little. His mom abused him. He was on the street at a very young age, learn how to shoot craps and be a pimp at a very young age. Okay. Just every, the, the streets brought him up. The gangs brought him up. Basically that was his life. And then I met him and yes, did he say who he was in the beginning? Not really. I found out later, but his first girl that he ever had, he tried to, to kill her and he was in jail for seven years and just got wow. released. He was in jail for attempted murder arson. So, and, and you know, I pray for him, by the way, I know God's going to get him. God loves Come him on. so much. Jesus loves him so much. By the way, I wrote a book. You guys can go oh. on the screen later, but fallen out of the sex industry and into the arms of the savior. It's my, my memoir about what happened to me. And I was a high class call girl, by the way, I wasn't walking down the street like, oh, well, she's a hooker. So, you know, no, I was a high class call girl. I was super snooty with it. Sometimes if I was forced to go to a motel, I would tell the phone girl, I'm not going there. Do you know that the average lifestyle of a sex worker, they call them sex workers, but I don't like using that word. Right. I would say a, a sex industry person, human being, right. That's in the sex industry that's selling themselves is seven years. And then they, they die. Uh, and did you know it's one to 3% actually get out of prostitution and trafficking alive. They get rescued out. That's why we're here. That's why mm -hmm. hookers for Jesus is here because I knew if I didn't do something, when I got out of it, I overdosed on August 2nd, 2003. And I've been doing this work for about 15 years. I had to heal, of course. I mean, I wouldn't recommend someone starting a nonprofit agency the day after they overdose. I mean, no. it just doesn't, no. I, it's just, you need some healing time, Absolutely. sister girl, or Absolutely. sister boy, whatever you want to call it, right? You need some healing time. Mm -hmm. And I needed to do that. But that night when I overdosed, was probably the best night of my life because I literally gave my life to Jesus and said, Jesus, because I had went to church as a little girl. I, I knew about Jesus at five. I accepted him into my heart and I truly believe. And I know some people will argue with me, but he was with me the whole time. Top secret. I, top secret. I know it. When I was selling myself, turning tricks, girl. Yeah. Well, the Bible says never. that he will never, his, one of his promises and he is God. He cannot lie. He will not break his promises. He's the most faithful one that we will ever know. You know, any, you have been hurt and burned so many times. I have been hurt and burned so many times. Every single person that's going to come across this program has been burnt by people 
But the Bible says that God is faithful and true, and it is the truest statement ever, ever. So yeah, absolutely. You. Stuck by you. We can leave him. We can turn our backs on him. But he, look at it. Look at you and I are having this conversation because of how faithful and true that he is. So Man, I when I met it. you, and I just want to say that to you, when I met you, Roxanne, I was like, there's hardly any people that I even know that are redeemed from the industry. And I, I'm going to cry right now because mm. to meet you was a breath of fresh air. Mm. Like I felt like I was so alone for so long, you know? And the thing is, is that we just, I want to, I'm talking to someone out there right now. Mm. You are not alone. That's it. You are not alone. There's someone that's like you, that's walking this journey that God's going to connect you with. I prophesy that in the name of Jesus. We are the people that thought we were alone. But guess what? You're never alone. The Holy Spirit is with you and he sees you. God sees you and Jesus loves you. And he's just waiting for you just to say, I surrender all. I just surrender all, all the things that I thought life was going to be. God, I give it to you mm, because guess on. what? I want you to make my life the Amen. way that you designed it. What is my purpose? It was never to sell myself. It was never to, to, to be a commodity or a body for someone. It was to be an intelligent mind and soul spirit that could give back and love other people and to help other people and to serve other people. And that is my purpose now. Mm. People like me, people like you, right? Yeah. We need to tell people the truth. Amen. That life, chasing the money, chasing the glamour, the, 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 the prestige, even in media now, everybody wants to have a platform. It's not going to get you anywhere. Great. But I tell you what will serving others and loving others as God called us to do. You know what? I actually definitely want to pray with our viewers in just a couple minutes, if you're okay with that. Yes. Um, I want to go back to what you were saying about shame. And one, one beautiful scripture, one of the, another beautiful truth that God says in his word is that we, he takes our sin and he throws it as far as the east is from the west. And when I think of that promise and that scripture, it just brings me so much comfort to remember, uh-uh, no shame here because I know what God already did with my sin. And so maybe share a little bit more about, you know, you're in the hospital or I don't know if you said you were at the hospital. Yes, I was in the hospital. Yes, in the hospital. Yes. So what happened? Well, you know, I got there and I remember the doctor coming in and I just, Roxanne, I felt this peace. I, I I cannot describe it. It was like all the weight, the shame and the guilt just lifted off my shoulders. And remember, I want, I want people to just get this. You are going to always be reminded by the enemy through sometimes other people about what you used to do. Do not receive that. Mm. The enemy is the liar. He is the accuser of the brethren, right? He got Eve to bite that fruit and take the from the tree. And I'm gonna tell you something, shame and guilt has a direct connection because we talk about the habitual lifestyle, has a okay. direct connection to addiction, okay? Because we don't wanna feel it. It's so hard to feel that and stay in that emotion. Totally. And and mm. Jesus is, is my pill. Jesus is my addiction now because he takes all that away. My drugs did at one point, you know, drowning myself in that lifestyle and the money mm. and all the glamour was my pill back then. But I want to say, if you try it like that and you do that, you're going to find that you're all alone, that it doesn't do anything but get you deeper in a pit of despair and darkness because that stuff never fulfills you. I just want to say, if you hold on to shame, it'll hold back on to you. But if you let go of it, you don't have to deal with your addictions anymore and you just give it to God. And it doesn't matter if you feel it. Feelings will lie to you. I want to just encourage anyone out there that always, well, I, I'm letting it go, but I still feel, hey, that's going to happen for a little while, but you need to keep releasing it to him. That's it. Quote scriptures, pray, get around some people that are going to encourage you. If there's toxic people in your life, would you please cut them off? Cut them off. You don't have to be yeah. around those people. Did that answer the question a little bit more? I love it. I think it's amazing <laughs> advice that you're giving. Um, you know, and I want to say this to our viewers as well. If you're waiting for that perfect moment and to be perfect to come to Jesus, then you're doing it all wrong. God is so good. Annie and I are both testimony of how God literally will meet us right where we're at. And God wants to meet you right where you're at at this very moment. You don't have to be perfect. If we were perfect, we wouldn't have needed Jesus to right. die and to raise again, to bridge that gap for us. Be honest and just raw with where you're at because he already knows where you're at. He already knows your heart and he will meet you right there. And also this, what better time is there than right now 
than to make Jesus Christ, the living God, your personal Lord and Savior. There's no better time. Look yes. at the world around us. Everything can crumble just like that. We're seeing it right before our eyes that literally everything can crumble. But the yes. Bible says that he is the rock. I don't know about yes. you, but I want to make him my foundation day after day after day. So I definitely want us to pray with our viewers. Uh, is there anything else? I do want to ask you a couple more questions. Like I said, there's so much I want to try to cram oh. in this. Um, what? Destiny House. Destiny, Destiny House. House. Yes, yes, yes. So just really shortly, I, I started the ministry Hookers for Jesus and just did just outreach. And Roxanne, you came with me on an outreach one night. Remember that? Yes, absolutely. And so there was no place to bring the ladies that I was reaching out to. And I started bringing them to my house, which I, is so unethical. Please don't do that, you guys. Don't rescue someone. <laughs> and it's dangerous. Don't do it. And I started Destiny House in 2007. And we got this new property in 2013, huge property with a couple buildings on it. And that destiny house, I'm telling you, it's where ladies can come and dream, discover, develop destiny that God's given them. And it's all the women that have been in the sex industry or that have been trafficked can come to our home and recover. And there's six months of healing. And then there's schooling, vocational school if they need to take it, regular GED, whatever they need to study for. And then they receive a job before they move out. And it's just a great program. It's 12 months, but they, if they need to stay up to two years, they can. And then we just got a grant for a second home. And I'm calling this home the Dream House. And it's a place where ladies can come it's a good for name. the ones that have graduated, right? The program. And now they have their job. They're living independently now. They still have their social worker, uh, case managers, just to just to kind of just keep them accountable and 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 more freedom, basically more freedom. Maybe they'll have their car by now. And that's another year program. Melissa Farley did this great study on prostitution and sex industry that when you leave it, you go back five to seven times. Now with Jesus, we find that it's not that high number anymore. I know a lot of people are watching this program and they very much identify with the heart of your ministry and what you're doing. How could somebody get involved or find out more information or even uh, give or donate to your yeah. uh, to your ministry? So they can just go to hookersforjesus.net, click on donate, and you can find us on Facebook, Hookers for Jesus, and on Twitter and on Instagram. And also Annie Lobert, I'm kind of like the face. So you're going to see me everywhere. And I also have a little, a little side note, just like Roxanne, I have a little show. It's called Annie's Pink Chair. Yay. And you can also find us there as well to get more updates because I do like to talk about Destiny House and Hookers for Jesus there as well as a platform. We have a podcast as well. So uh, I just, you know what? I'm so thankful for all the support. We always are looking for volunteers, supporters, and donators light lightly used clothing but i really prefer new for the ladies because they're they're just face it they're god's Absolutely. god's girls and we want to dress them nice i mean they want to be treated special so and uh, earlier earlier we mentioned your book fallen that you yes. had written so let's put it we have up on the screen here fallen and so they can find out more information on your website uh, to get their hands on that awesome book. Trust me, you guys want it. We just barely, barely touched on Annie's story today. You need to get this book. It will just stir up a fire in your heart and just remind you of how awesome and faithful and miraculous our God truly is. Roxanne, so good. where's your book? It's um, it's uh, it's coming. It's I know coming. it is. Come on, girl. Amen. It's so coming. It's coming. <laughs> I want to ask you one more thing too. You know, a lot of people, a lot of times, people just need to hear what inspires others. And obviously, girl, you just keep that fire going and you're doing amazing things for the kingdom of God. And I praise God for your life. I praise God for your yes. Is there a scripture or something God initially spoke to your heart or speaks to your heart on a regular basis that keeps you motivated and keeps you going? I would say Romans 8, 28 is my mantra. I mean, Jeremiah 29, 11, these are common scriptures, but they mean so much to me, you know, that it says that God's going to work all things out for those who love him. And when we love him, we are called according to his purposes, because that's what it says for those that will love God that are called according to his purposes. And I love Romans 8 because the entire chapter is about redemption and being released from guilt and shame and that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. No hell or high water can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. So just remember that. If anyone feels like, man, I don't know if God loves me. I feel like I'm on the fence with it. Just read Romans 8. 
Read Romans 8 and get refreshed. You want to just pray for our viewers quickly. Maybe somebody is watching and they want to experience this freedom from shame uh, that you were talking about. Or maybe like we mentioned earlier, they're, they're stuck in like a habitual lifestyle and just, God, like help break me out of this. So maybe just pray for some of our viewers. Yes, Lord, we just come to you right now. And I just pray for everyone that's listening, yes. everyone that's watching. Lord, even even if they've never been in the sex industry, maybe they're addicted. They're addicted to porn, addicted to drugs, just addicted to their work. And, and Lord, you know what? They're just coming. They're listening right now. And I just ask you, God, to release. You release the key that they need to open up that door. They just need to be obedient. I yes. thank you right now that you're strengthening everyone that's watching lord we ask right now for your touch lord holy spirit we ask for your presence and i ask right now that you would awaken in them the love the forgiveness the hope that you've given me and roxanne in our lives lord if it's so dark they can't see that you would open up their eyes that you would let the scales fall off that you would open up wide their ears and most importantly lord jesus make yourself real in their heart lord that their heart would receive what we're praying right now and if you never ever accepted jesus or tried jesus pray this with us right now come on lord jesus lord jesus i come to you right now i come to you right now and i give you and everything, everything in my life, I surrender all my sin, all my habits, all my hangups, all my guilt, all my shame. I believe that you died on the cross, but on the third day, you rose again. Jesus, forgive me for not believing in you. I surrender my life today. And I ask that you walk with me and you guide me from now on for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Man, Roxanne, if they prayed that, girl, it's a start of a new life. Come you just on. were born again, baby girl. Baby we are celebrating. Born again. <laughs> we are celebrating with them. Heaven is celebrating yes. right now. If you prayed that, uh, I'm going to repeat our email at the end. But if you prayed that, we would love to come alongside you in your decision and the next steps. You can reach us at dreamtheconversation at gmail.com. I know that Annie was talking about some of her favorite scripture in uh, scriptures in Romans. I love Romans all of Romans, you know, and, and just like Annie was just saying and just praying, uh, you know, but Romans 10, 9 says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, then we will be saved. And so just like Annie was saying and leading you in prayer, if you prayed that prayer and you're confessing now Jesus as your Lord and you're believing in your heart enough to pray that prayer and you're believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead guess what guys like annie was saying we are so excited because you are part of this family now welcome welcome to the family sometimes we overcomplicate it and people are like i don't know where to begin and i don't know how to change my life well you just made that first step you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart and so welcome to the family it's super easy it's and, awesome. and and by the way when you repented just now when you just said give it i give it all to god he took everything like you said earlier roxanne and just mm -hmm. threw it in the sea of forgetfulness Come on. I love okay, it. you bring it up again. He's not bringing it up again. You are, but you need to just rebuke that and say, I'm not bringing that up again. Or anyone else that keeps bringing up your junk, dude, give me a chance. I just gave my life to Jesus. I'm trying something That's new. It. And That's even it. if they don't believe in you, God believes in you. Okay. Sure does. He sure does. And like we said, he's so faithful and he will walk with you through every step of this journey. Amen. Amen. Girl, I just love you so much. I love you too. what you're me doing too. for the kingdom, your heart and your radical fire. Every time I get around you, I feel so fired up and stirred up. I'm like, let's go <laughs> reach the world for Jesus. <laughs> so everybody go check out uh, her website. Get your hands on that book. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on reading that. And, uh, and yeah, just donate and get involved in her ministry however Thank you, you can.
Oh, that's it for today. I know that you guys were as blessed as I was by Annie's testimony. She is such a blessing. Um, and if you made that decision to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, again, we want to help you in your next steps. We want to hear from you. Reach out to us. Or if you have any questions or comments or ideas for upcoming programs, again, reach out to us. You can reach us at dreamtheconversation at gmail.com. Guys, until next week, stay blessed in him. We'll see you then.